three months since we dropped our grizzly and bear at the shipping port in Melbourne, Australia. And maybe, not confirmed yet, but possibly today we will be reunited. Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland with Lee and Steffi. This is a new chapter, a new continent. Welcome to Africa. Cape, Cape Town, Town, South, South Africa. Africa. It's been three months since we shipped Grizzly and Bear. We are finally here on African soil and it feels fantastic to be here. We're going to rent a car. It's yeah. not a Defender. <laughs> Because Grizzly and Bear right now is floating in the harbour of Cape Town. There's been massive delays. <laughs> Very good, thank you. The lady in there, she gave me two choices. She gave me the choice of a Toyota or a Renault. That's a French car. We're checking. The car is in perfect condition. We loaded all our gears and we were ready to go. For the time waiting for our home on wheels, we were so lucky to have an amazing place to stay. Can you believe it? We could actually see the ship from our balcony. Every day we kept a close eye on it, but no movement. The weather being too wild, the wind too strong for the unloading. This is day four in South Africa. Getting a little bit impatient, but trying to stay positive with the vehicle still sitting in the harbour. I've had enough of this car. Sorry Frenchies, but I don't like your Renault, Renault uh, quid, it's called the quid. On a daily check, one morning, we had a big surprise. The ship was moving, heading into port. We were just so excited. That day, we jumped into our car and we drove around, trying to find a spot where we could watch the unloading. It wasn't really easy because all those areas are restricted. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Wanre Fingo, working at the city of Cape Town. I just want to welcome you here in Cape Town to say this is a cool town, a lekker town. This is Cape Town. We're busy here cleaning the surface of the beach here, making sure that there's no litter. But they have a nice day. Thank you very much. From our not-so-successful mission, we decided to visit the city center, starting with the iconic Green Market Square. It's a great place to find crafts and African souvenirs. Okay, never mind. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Brother. <laughs> Check out. You get the memos from me, I'll get the memos from you. Oh, it's very you support beautiful. me, and you get a picture. Okay. From there, we made our way to the famous Bokap, the Malay Quarter. The bright and colourful houses are a symbol of freedom. During apartheid, people couldn't own houses. They were painted white while on lease. When people finally became homeowners, they painted their houses in bright and vibrant colours to express their freedom. the weekend and still without any news from the Defender, we decided to go to a 4x4 Expo. Welcome to the Off-Road Expo! Geignet Beite Expo! As we arrived at the show, right at the entrance, the new Enios Grenadier was on display. Super exciting to see one finally in person. I've been waiting a few years for this moment. It's got this awesome cockpit style thing um, in the centre roof console above your head here, which I really like. Love the sunroof. I'm impressed. Love the steering wheel on this one and the uh, handbrake. Barry from Ineos Grenadier, South Africa, and uh, we're very proud to finally have our first uh, launch series vehicle in the country. Uh, it's been a year of uh, prototypes up until now, uh, up in Namibia, Botswana, Lesotho, all around uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, testing the vehicles. Uh, but finally, we, uh, we're putting people behind the wheel to give them an experience of, of what it's like to drive Grenadier. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Big man. pleasure. Here's one for you as well. Champion. Big pleasure, man. Thank, Thank you so much. Nice to meet you guys. Well, they are making a, um, a ute version, a utility version, or as they call them here in South Africa, a, a bucky. 
Bucky. <laughs> it didn't take long for something to catch my attention. Small food that you always wanted to bride that you can never bride. Now you can put it inside the bag, put it on top of your bride grid. We do popcorn on the bride, we bride mincemeat on the bride. You can do prawns and fish. Um, so literally anything that you want to do, bride broikis. So brai is like your, your barbecue and broikis is, is just like bread. So on that you have like cheese and tomato and onion and all that. You, uh, ah, you, and you butter that. You put it inside the bag on top of your brai and that is a brai broiki. I really want to give that a go. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for popping by. <laughs> Although we could spot a lot of similarities with Australia, some details kept reminding us that we landed on a new and exciting continent. Uh, this will do nicely for a little walk around snack. Every uh, yeah, nice. Biltong store I've been into hasn't had it. So uh, That one is a sweet chili one. Maybe 200 grams. Here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lee got himself some bacon jerky. If you know me, you know I can't resist the smell of fresh hot bread. I think this one I call rosto bread. Looks amazing, smells amazing. Yeah. I chose egg and cheese and it was delicious. We went to the show to get some ideas for a big, big project coming up soon. But more on that later. We can tell you, we know who is going to be involved. It's a company we found doing lots of research and inquiries. Seeing their work for real confirmed that we made the right decision. Oh, look at that. Help yourself. <laughs> You're getting bloody spoiled, Frenchie. Last time this straw was empty. It's, yeah, we have been for a little while. I am a follower. Just wait for this. Look, Greenus, I found some friends. What? How's it? How you doing, mate? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> we watch you guys all the time. Oh, well, thank you. Proper rain. Oh, the rain has started really good, so we thought we'll call it. But that was so cool. A bunch of people in there actually recognized the two of us from the videos, which was a little bit, uh, we're not used to that sort of thing. That was a little bit humbling, a little bit, uh, Awkward, I guess, uh, but thank you um, if you're watching these videos thank to you. everybody that came and said hello today. Good morning, 6.30 and today we decided we're going to hike to the top of Table Mountain. As we hike up the trail towards Table Mountain, we now have the most perfect view of the evergreen container ship that we very much hope is minus. <laughs> one sea container with our grizzly and bear because it should have been unloaded uh, yesterday. We're going somewhere here. If you don't feel like hiking to get on top of Table Mountain, you can always catch the cable car. For this spur of the moment idea to hike Table Mountain, of course, the first thing I did was Google the toughest route up Cable Mountain, which, according to Google, is the India Venstra route, which is the one we're on. A lot of crawling, a lot of rock uh, scrambling, and even some ladders coming up. 12 years ago, these steel handles didn't exist over here. Oh, really? Well, that one, made, <laughs> that one made for an interesting one. This is so cool. It's definitely a uh, good rock climbing. The wet rock is not making it easier. So much fun. We're not <laughs> soaking wet. We're drowned rats. It's uh, yeah, it's come in pretty heavy. It wasn't supposed to, but it's we're in a mountain now, and uh, it's actually quite fun scrambling all over this uh, wet rock. It's not cold. That's the main thing. There's no wind, and yeah, it's an intense climb. I wouldn't recommend the India Venstra route if you're not comfortable with proper hands on the rock climbing. Careful, yeah. Okay, the visibility is not great. Maybe 50 meters or so but literally we're, we're sure that that is hundreds of meters of, of drop. Don't say you weren't warned. We think we've got about five minutes until we're gonna get to the cable car. We are gonna attempt to cheat and take the cable car down. See if you can spot the ship. Oh yeah, here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> 
Oh, beautiful view from the top of Table Mountain. And we'll be back on a blue sky day. This cable car is so steep. Okay, so enjoy, you don't have to hold on. 1067 meters above sea level. The whole cable is 1.2, um, 1200 meters. The platform rotates 360 degrees. With about 1 million people using the cable car per year, this is Cape Town's most popular tourist attraction. In less than 5 minutes, we were down what took us about two and a half hours to hike up. Ready to go, ready to go. Thank you so much Paul and Ernesta for this apartment it has been so amazing we're gonna miss it but we are also so very excited because it has been 90 days since we loaded our defender in a sea container today is the day we're going to pick it up it's so full <laughs> an emotional day to return the mighty quid <laughs> you're gonna be sad to see this little one go yes <laughs> uh, it's been a good little runabout car we actually wanted to be there for the unloading of the car, but it has already been done. Duncan at African Overlanders was far too efficient. You excited? I don't know how I feel actually. It's been 90 days like Steffi mentioned earlier, but the time has gone so quick, so we've kept ourselves busy, but it's a funny feeling. I guess I'll be excited when I see you. African Overlanders is a popular place for shipping in and out of Africa with containers coming and going almost daily. <laughs> Is that good? Oh, so good! Reunion. So good! Yeah, it doesn't look like it bounced off the sides at all or anything like that, that's good. Opening the door, everything looks pretty clean. Doesn't smell mouldy, which is a good thing. There's pressure in all the airbags, which I wasn't sure about. I knew I could smell a little bit of mould. We have a little bit, but I don't think it's too bad. Overall, I think all the moisture absorbent we put inside the container, outside the vehicles, keeping windows down, worked pretty well this time. All right, list of uh, things we have to do before we hit the road because we are headed to go get a service this morning. I need to check that the batteries are connected correctly. Check the oil. I don't think we would have lost any oil in the container. We're doing an oil change today anyway, but just a quick check. That's my dipstick for the coolant. Uh, it's got some in there, so it's all right for now. We also have to reinstall the awning. I think that's it. <laughs> Just a few quick checks. Go over the car, make sure it starts obviously, and then hit the road. We went to the office to get our keys back and to sign and collect our carnet de passage. It's like a car passport, required to import the vehicle into Africa. That's not how I would have strapped the car in, to be honest with you. Those ratchets loosen, they're not vibration proof, because it's only using the tape to stick it, whereas the buckle should be actually holding it. So it was an interesting pack and he, <laughs> and, he, and he packed it not off the right parts of the car, <laughs> say, but it got here safe. Lesson learned for next time. Rough sea, container doing this, which yeah. the containers can do, oh, yeah, they it just stops and slides. Mm -hmm. Usually the tyre is good enough to yes. stop it, but uh, two bits of wood <laughs> around one tyre I thought was quite, uh, quite funny. So this straps against the buckle so it doesn't vibrate loose mm -hmm. so that but that's not a car strap that's a motorbike right. strap we had to put our tailgate back up we had it down to reduce our length inside the container let's not forget a quick check on the tire pressure that's One last thing, we went to say hello to our shipping friends Inga and Tobin, wishing each other all the best for our African adventures. It should be awesome and you guys enjoy Africa too. Thank you. Alright brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Start, 
start thinking about it. <laughs> See you, mate. We are headed to Stellenbosch. We're going to drop the rental car back and we need diesel. I can't believe it. Grizzly and bear in Africa. Uh -oh. <laughs> Is there a problem already? We've got a funky noise coming on. I don't know what it is, but hopefully we can make it to the garage we're headed to this morning because it doesn't sound good. Can't visibly see anything, so we'll just steady, steady. Sounds horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I was going super slow trying to figure out what it is. I'd narrowed it down to the rear diff and <laughs> the prop shaft just fell off. Uh, anyway, we're on our way to a mechanic. What I'll do now is I'll remove the um, rear prop shaft. We'll just have to drive in four wheel drive. It's about 30 kilometers, I think. It's not too bad. Uh, what happened? Uh, the prop shaft just fell off. Oh. <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? Oh, I'm okay. I've been better, though. Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Every single car is <laughs> stopping, asking if we need any help. Not really where I wanted to be. One kilometre into our <laughs> African adventures, and I'm already pulling stuff off this bloody car. Look at that. I'm gonna get off the road. Lee removed the prop shaft and put the car into four wheel drive. We are now off the road. If that had come off at high speed, it would have ripped the whole bottom of the car apart. I'm so lucky. I don't even know what this bit is called. It's got a little bit of damage from it just falling off then, but the splines seem okay. And there's the problem right there. Ah, oh, hang on, it's snapped. It's sheared off. Ah yeah, so we can't, I can't fix it right now. Unless I've, oh, I wouldn't have a bolt that size, I don't think. Oh, we'll just have to drive in four drive. And... It's almost like a setup. <laughs> like how come we had no noise, no nothing, for all the time in Australia, and then it's just been sitting for three months, not doing anything, and then it's bloody broke. It's very interesting. I think it's completely rear diff related because I haven't removed the half shafts yet, the rear half shafts. It's making a horrible noise, so I'm gonna remove those as well. I'm not gonna drop the car back, you're right. We'll keep the rental car. And um, Steffi's right. We've got 35 kilometers to go, so that's not too bad. We drive 100 kilometers once without a rear prop shaft. <laughs> so if it's still making this horrible noise after removing the half shafts, then I think we have more serious problems. <laughs> I might put these actually on the rubber mat just to keep them in good protection. I've removed the half shafts, we've driven another probably 10 kilometers and there's zero noise now. Okay. We made it to the garage safely. It wasn't exactly the start we were hoping for, but after all, we were so lucky it happened when it did. Join us next time as we will have lots of fun working at Stefan's garage, making new friends and enjoying life. Because it's always like that when something goes wrong with the Land Rover. Until then, take care. Bye bye.